Well, hello folks and welcome back. Today's video is going to be the third and final installment in the short series of addressing the defective fuel tank liner for the Suzuki TS-50 restoration project. Be aware this video is a little bit shorter than my normal 15 to 20 minute video. Uh, that's just the way it worked out this time, I'm afraid. Before we get to the body of the video though, I am going to uh, insert here a couple of little brief clips that I shot during the course of working on the fuel tank that I thought some of you might be interested in seeing. These, these are very short, uh, two little clips that you'll see here coming up, and then we're going to move on to the body of the video and wrap this part of the project. I want to demonstrate that my little uh, rubber gasket I made from the inner tube actually doesn't leak. In here it's still got the MEK in the tank. I'm just getting ready to empty it out. You can hear it sloshing around. So now I'm going to turn the tank upside down. See if I can give you a shot of the underside there where that gas cap is. Not the best shot, but it's about all I can do under the circumstances. But if I hold the tank completely horizontal and move it around. Again, you can hear the fluid. And take a look there and see it's dry. And I've left it upside down for close to 24 hours or so, and it doesn't leak. So that just goes to show that you can make at least temporary gaskets to prevent fluid leaks like that. Better part of a week later now, and I'm about done with the tank. I finished the cleaning with MEK. I then drained the uh, used MEK out into the original cans. I think I showed a little shot of that. I decided I'm not going to reuse that MEK simply because it's too contaminated, so I'm going to have to properly dispose of that. So I put it back in the original cans. Uh, then I dried the tank, I flushed it with acetone thoroughly, drained it again, dried it, and then I flushed it one last time with hot soapy water using a liquid dish washing detergent. I rolled it around really well and then rinsed it thoroughly probably four or five times with clean hot water. And then I put my vacuum on reverse so that I could blow uh, air through the tank and then out the mount here where the pet cot goes and obviously you can see that so I, this tank is thoroughly dry inside right now. now I'm going to give you a view of the inside of the tank what it looks like now that I've finished stripping the um, liner I'm not going to do a picture in picture this time I'm just going to shoot the screen of the computer so you can see the output of the camera I think it'll just be a little simpler that way and you have the gist of what the picture in picture looks like anyway in terms of uh, how I'm maneuvering the camera. So let's cut over to the computer and uh, we'll do a quick scope. There's the fuel filler neck. I'm going to go down inside and take a look around. There's the lower right rear. That's the fuel tap, fuel pitcock fitting right there. You see some flash rust very typical. It's very difficult to dry these fuel tanks quick enough to uh, prevent flash rust, which really does not hurt a thing, even if you're going to apply a liner. So the, that's the back of the tank. That's the lower rear left of the tank, the side. See if you can't see the top of the tank. This is the top of the tank right in front of the rider's position right there. We'll swing around to the other side here to the front. There's the front of the tank. That's the right front lower corner right there. 
see remnants of the fuel tank liner. That was very tenacious material, uh, that compound. It was very tough to get off, even with MEK, as you can see right there. And there's the lower front left of the tank, and then the left side of the tank we're looking at here. And then we're getting towards the top of the tank. So I'm satisfied with what we managed to achieve with the MEK. So I'm about done with the tank at this stage. Uh, ultimately, somewhere down the road, I'll have to make a decision what I'm going to do about paint, whether I'm going to paint it myself. If that's the case, I will line it. I'll have to repair, obviously, the dents. I will, I will line it then myself with a poor 15 tank liner and then go through the whole paint process. If I decide to send it to a painter or my painter, I will very likely leave the lining up to him and let him take care of it using uh, the radiator shop I think I mentioned in the previous segment as part of this video that uh, I think is what he uses. Um, and they will then, they would strip, they'll strip out what's left of the inside rust and uh, any other contaminants, but it's, it's pretty clean right now and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. In case you're wondering, there's the fuel cap right there and that gasket I made out of that inner tube that worked out really, really well. As I demonstrated, it sealed uh, real tight, and so I'm happy with the way that worked out as well. So that's going to be it for this video today, folks. Uh, just putting a wrap on the uh, fuel tank, stripping the uh, original liner out that was poorly applied. Uh, we'll come back to the tank uh, quite a bit later on uh, in future videos somewhere down the road. It'll be a while, though, so don't anticipate seeing that anytime soon. In the meantime, any issues, questions, thoughts, drop me a note. Otherwise, as usual, thanks for watching.